really careful. Hats on backwards today because we're ready. We have a shield. You want a face mask? Boom. And it's easy to get on and off with a hat backwards. You can also want a dusk. Dusk. A dusk. A dust respirator. Uh, I'm not going to wear this today because, you know, for the camera and the sound, it's going to sound really bad if I talk like that. So we're not going to use that, but you should use that. And then a wire wheel. A wire wheel such as this. This is just a right angle drill, so don't be like weird. You don't need this. Don't be weird. Uh, don't think it's weird. You don't need one of these. You can use a normal drill, especially one with a handle. It'll control it a lot better. It's somewhat safe. Just don't touch it and just take your time and, you know, practice with it because, uh, you know, it spins around. This is really, really strong. These barely bend, but the technique is amazing. So just be real careful at first. You'll get the hang of it. You'll feel it. And then, you know, just keep going. Don't put too much pressure. And I'll show you guys that right here with this lovely end table that we are going to be uh, grinding away on. So this one is all nice and chipped up, needs some work. And rather than just painting it and filling all those voids and everything, you know, slightly, uh, who's excited for a slightly dangerous distressing technique? Yes, Dixie Bell, we all are. I hope you guys are for real. It is not, it, and you're right, slightly dangerous is okay. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna set you up steps apart from everyone else. Uh, and power tools, who doesn't like power tools? These are awesome. Look at this thing. So uh, do this outside, preferably, unless you have a nice garage that's somewhat ventilated because, you know, there will be dust flying. So this is just an end table I've got. I've got two of these. Uh, so this is one of them. And, you know, here I can show you what it looks like. It looks like that. Uh, it's And it's balancing on here, so bear with me. Hopefully it doesn't fly off here. But the uh, main thing is this isn't even solid pine. It looks like pine, but when I was digging at the other one, it's actually just some form of plywood. Uh, made to look like it with all the grooves and everything the way they cut it. So today we're going to be doing the top of it. We're going to distress the whole top with the grinding wheel. And then next week, uh, if you guys tune in on the same time, same channel, we're going to be doing a crackle finish all over the legs. So that'll be really cool. So today we're just going to get to the top and it's going to be a lot of fun. So first things first, safety first. Face shield. You can get these anywhere. You could also get this at the same place of anywhere that you got this face mask. Uh, really inexpensive. I think this bit attachments, maybe like 10 to $15 tops. And this will last you. I've been doing this for like 10 years, maybe 12 uh, on new furniture, old furniture, you name it. And it's, it's lasted quite some time on the wood. So it does all kinds of woods, especially if you have like a laminated top, uh, like a veneer top and it's all chipping and coming apart. Why not just go to town with this, the plywood underneath or whatever's underneath will grind away as well. But with the painting technique that we do on top, it's going to make it look amazing and no one else would have picked up that veneer piece. So it's kind of cool. You know, it's all falling apart, but you picked it up and then you can easily do this in a matter of minutes and just like totally rock the world of this thing. So we will get started right now on this thing. Face mask on. So all you do, it might sound a little funny. Uh, all you do is you turn it on and just start going with the grain. So really, let's see if you guys can see that. It's just eating up the wood. I'm going nice and slow for you guys. I'll just take the mask a little higher. Going nice and slow just to kind of get it going. You have multi-speed drill. It's totally fine because that way you'll be able to control it a lot better. And it's really not too aggressive. Depending, It's all about how hard you push on this thing. So uh, you know what? We're just going to keep the mask off. <laughs> it's going to be more of a pain in the butt. So uh, it's really just you know how hard you push and the pressure. The harder you push, the more detail and the more deep the grooves are going to be. So say you have a really bad you know chip right here. You just go on the side here and you just grind that thing away. And like, seriously, it just strips paint like butter. You do not have to worry about putting a stripper on here. This is just straight up from the curb. You know, someone getting rid of these, they don't want them. Didn't do anything, didn't even clean this piece off. You don't need to. This thing will do everything for you. And you just really just grinding it away. And now what we're trying to go for is multi-dimensional piece, a very weathered look. So it's really cool. What I like to do is just follow the grain. Sorry about I'm holding this awkward so you guys can see. I'll hold it like this, maybe you can see better. So we're just following the grain. There's no uh, wrong way of doing this. You can go against the grain. You can make shapes. You can make smiley faces. You can go back and forth like this. It's all about, you know, try being very irregular. Uh, that sounds weird. Just try not to make it too patternized. So like, as you can see, just that real quick, let me get my fancy little uh, brush here. And uh, see that right there, you can see with the difference in colors, hopefully I didn't hit anything with my mouse, but it's got a, and it just fell, uh, it's got a bunch of grooves right here in the different patterns. So basically all we're doing is making our own little grooves, highs and lows, where the paint's going to connect differently 
we're going to lightly brush on the wax on top after we put the fluff down and give it a really cool 3D uh, effect. So it should be a lot of, a lot of fun. So you just keep on going to town. It, it, there's no, like you can go as deep as you want. The deeper you go, the cooler this effect will be. You can do it lightly if you want. You know, you can do just the door of a cabinet. You can do just like the styles and rails of furniture, which are the pieces, you know, behind the door. Really, it's up to you. This one, we're just gonna be doing the top. And then you're gonna also wanna follow and do the sides as well, you know, all around here. And like I said, just be real cautious. Normally, if you're using a normal drill, it's gonna be way out here, which is fine. They have the ones with the little little stick holder thing on it, you know, that kind of you could you could really get a go to town. You can also get a grinder, which this one's kind of acting like a grinder, and they work the same for that. And these are just wire wheels that you can get, you know, Hobby Lobby, not Hobby Lobby, no, uh, Harbor Freight has really good prices on them, and as well does like Home Depot and all those things. So I will dust this off. And you can use an air compressor blower, but that would be way too loud for you guys. And then the next step would be to shake your can of Dixie Bell paint right here. And uh, while we're shaking that, Corey Farrell says, wild. Awesome. Yeah, this is a really amazing technique. I'm not even joking. Like, it is a lot of fun. Uh, you will, it'll set you apart, I think, because I don't see many people doing this at all. It's almost like sandblasted. So if you guys ever been to Disney World and uh, rode the log, ra uh, log ride and everything, and it looks like all those railings are really old that you're, uh, while you're waiting, it's kind of like the same technique as that. So grab your Dixie Bell brush. Uh, I would highly recommend the one uh, on their website, which the link is in the descriptions. This, this one right here, I don't know which kind it is. It's just rounded on the end. Really cool, holds a whole lot of paint. Uh, and after you clean it, you do not have to uh, you know, do anything special. Uh, you don't even have to get the whole thing done all the way, because what we're gonna be doing is covering it again. The main thing we're trying to go for is we're painting all the lower parts, uh, but I like to just paint the whole thing. Just give it a nice little coat. It's all fresh wood, so. You know, you're just gonna do that real easily. And then once this is dry, you move on to the awesome fun part of the waxing. And you can use pretty much anything. You use another color paint as well, but I'm gonna just use their wax because man, it's awesome and it's really easy to control. And I really like the texture. It's like, it's like super smooth, creamy peanut butter. Uh, so we're gonna do that. So now while we're waiting for this to dry and uh, I'll be able to sneak on a whole nother piece that's already done so you don't have to watch me paint for uh, 35 minutes. We have an awesome part of the show today. Susan, the owner of uh, Dixie Bell Paint Company has a really cool tip. Uh, so we're gonna go right on to Susan. Take it away, Susan. Hey, thanks, Jason. Today I'm gonna give you a tip on the best way to paint with Dixie Bell paint. I always like to start with, obviously, a Dixie Belle paintbrush, and it needs to be damp. So, get my little trusty red bowl, which I'm never without, dip my paintbrush in, get the water off, it's nice and damp, and you can start painting right away with your Dixie Belle paint. You only need a little bit, and by keeping your brush damp, it will help you use less paint and also really reduce any drag that you get. Hope that helps. Well, now that was an awesome tip. How often do you hear the CEO, the founder, the owner of a company to tell you to use less of their product? For that, she is amazing, and that is too cool and awesome but that was a great tip and i hope you guys totally dig it and look at this look at this i uh, already grinded this whole thing and it's painted and it's dried now that is magic all right so now what we have now is the best thing wax and we can use the grunge gray which we're going to start off with <clears throat> just to kind of show off what it's doing and the light color of it and then i figure the black will use to highlight so like i said it's very cool consistency it's really like just like i mean you could really just use your finger i was going to use a rag but just to show you guys, it's like, it's like fun to paint with. Uh, you can just use your finger and what you're gonna go for is just the high parts of the piece. And that's what's gonna really just kind of show off all that grain. And it's up to you how much white you want to show. Cause we're almost just doing the high parts and then you know, you blend it. And so it's gonna give you a lot of detail. You could actually go inside of it and go backwards, work the wax in. So like, let's say, say we put a lot more, we go back into the grooves and then, you know, it's really up to you guys. 
of which way you want to go with it. You deep it into the groove, deep it into the grooves, and then you come back and you just lightly feather out all the high spots. So therefore, all the high spots are white, all the low parts are, are parts are gray. Uh, but all I like to do is just use a rag, a T-shirt that I found lying around, kind of do a really cool fold, folding technique. So what I like to do is kind of cup it inside of itself, if that makes any sense, and it almost makes like a nice little pad. Uh, and then that way it'll fit nice and inside here, and it actually keeps it a little tighter. So it doesn't go so you know deep into it. So if I just want to do the high spots, then I'm just going to lightly uh, work it like so, and just getting all of the high spots in there. And now after you grind it away with the grinder, uh, another tip is before you paint it white, you can also come back with some sandpaper or like the sanding sponge that Dixie Bell has, the 150 grit, and just break off if it's too hairy for you and you want a little smoother of like a, a finish, you could just do that. Uh, but I like it just kind of sometimes just keeping it nice and like rough and rustic. And uh, if you go too far, you know, this wax is awesome. You just kind of rub it a little harder, get it off. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much, you can wipe this whole thing on. You can leave it, let it dry. It'll just take a little longer. Don't put it on in gobs or anything. Uh, you don't want to go too crazy with it. Uh, it doesn't take too, too much, but I like to just kind of work it in. And it's really, uh, it's almost like feathering it in with your brush or dry brushing, you know, that sort of technique. And of course, I like to go with the wood grain. Uh, just because that's the way I grinded it. So this piece is a piece right here. If you could see where the crack was, this strip's going here, the wood grain, this grain's going this way, and this one's going this way. So it's really, really awesome. And the best part is the piece can be totally trashed and you can totally save it, which is a lot and a lot of fun. So yeah, where are you guys uh, writing in from and all that stuff? Let us know in there. And we're going to be doing the giveaway very, very soon. So be sure that you guys are putting in the comments, spin to win because I will pick one lucky winner to spin the awesome paintbrush thing that we have sitting right here that I don't want to touch right now because my hands are dirty. Uh, but yeah, you guys will totally have a chance to win whatever it spins on and it will be phenomenal. And if you hit the jackpot, which is one of the little things on there, you will get all three products we are using. And there is lots of things going on. So that is, that is pretty cool. So, you know, what'd you guys do this weekend? Anything fun? I could read the comments from all the way back here from Louisiana. Jenny, hello. I am from Louisiana as well, New Orleans originally. So what part of Louisiana are you from? That is awesome. Been to pretty much every spot in Louisiana since I was born to 20 something years. Lots and lots of fun. But yeah, this is one of the easiest, I think, techniques once you have it all, uh, uh, grinded because you almost let the uh, different high and lows do all the work for you and uh, yeah so I mean I'm letting some grays stay a little grayer and then letting some grays go a little lighter and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna be putting the black wax as well to kind of give a little transition I want to have a lot of colors and dimensions going on so and Denise hello from Mississippi spend the win heck yeah that's awesome very cool it is finally warm here in Chicago, which is totally awesome. Uh, it's actually super exciting. It's like in the 90s. So I'm thrilled for that. Although now I've got to go kick on my AC at some point, which is going to be a little too loud. Uh, and get a, get a steady work area, you know, guys. Don't, don't, don't balance it on a burn barrel with a black rag covering it on top of a cabinet on the bottom. Uh, but you know, if you have to, you have to. And that's just what you do. Pennsylvania for Sean. All right. What is up? Very cool. And once again, Izzy, my co-pilot, uh, co is unfortunately not able to make it tonight. She is uh, doing some band concert thing, so that's pretty cool. But don't worry, my wife is recording the whole thing. She missed the last one, so I get to miss this one. That's totally cool. Not that I like missing them. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. I really do enjoy going. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to cry about it. I'm just kidding. It's, it's, <laughs> I, 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 I'm slightly sad that I'm missing it. Uh, by slightly, I mean a whole lot, Izzy, if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. So she's got video of it, so it'll be cool. And it'll be a lot, a lot of fun to watch later. But yeah. Well, thank you, Sherry. This is too cool. It is, I mean, this is like super easy. I'm just taking my time here uh, because the video will be over. <laughs> but, so might as well just show you guys, you know, the whole thing. So yeah, just leaving it like that with the gray. I don't know if the camera picks it up. It kind of might pick it up a little funky, but we got a totally awesome weather thing going on. I want the darks and lights really to pop, the whites underneath. Uh, so yeah, it's really totally happening. And you do not have to use the wax on top of here. 
as far as for the uh, color. I'm just using it because, you know, you can use all their stains. Uh, all of their, like the Voodoo water-based stains will go on top of here very well. Same idea, putting it on a rag, blotting it off. You don't want it on there too, too uh, strong. And then just kind of dry. It's almost like a dry brushing technique, but we're going to call it a dry rag technique. Uh, and then, yeah, next week we're going to finish these off. Next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to do the crackle painting all down here uh, on the matching. So it should be really cool. Not sure what color. But if you guys have a recommendation of what color you think would go good with gray, black, and white so I could do the legs with the crackle finish, uh, I would need two colors. So just let me know in the comments. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, figure out some kind of prize for whoever wins that or uh, whoever, whatever color we pick. Uh, if you have the matching two colors... I'm sure we'll give you a prize for that next week. That'd be really cool too. So just be sure to share this sucker on your timeline. Give some hearts, you know, all that stuff. Some likes if you like it. That would be really awesome. All right, I think we're good on the gray. So I'm going to put the gray up. And we're going to go with the best dang black wax in the whole wide world. And we're just going to use this to highlight it. Uh, and it, it, honestly, it's just winging it, you know, just that's the best way I find when things work. I mean, you have an idea of what you want. You get your color pattern or palette going, and then you just see how it's going to go. You know, you can always wipe some off, uh, take some off. So black, I'm thinking it's going to be a little strong. So I'm going to dab off a little bit just to get my rag going and then just see what happens here. So yeah, that's definitely black, which is awesome. And then the best part of the wax is you can always kind of blend it in. A little bit so I always kind of like just putting it on a, let the high spots kick let it go where it wants to go you know don't fight it and then go to a lighter part of the rag blend where you need and just gonna highlight everything especially all the cracks all the nooks and crannies and yeah the wax is super easy to work with like it's almost like too easy uh, like I, I'm pretty sure anyone should be able to do this like very very simple and that's uh, I'm sure in part to miss Suzanne that is awesome which, yeah, let me know. Did you guys like her tip? What did you guys think of uh, Suzanne's tip? I thought it was pretty awesome, you know, that she's going to come on and help everyone out, which is really phenomenal. You know, I'm very new to this product as well. Uh, last, you know, probably six months or so. And I have not found one thing that I was like, you know, I don't like that. I definitely like so far everything I've tried. Uh, and of course, the patina paint, I would probably do a video on that every week. Because that is my favorite. Uh, but yeah, this wax is pretty dang awesome as well. Definitely kicking it. Almost looks like an old newspaper uh, deal. Uh, let's see. What? Ooh, Dixon and Stormy. That sounds awesome. That sounds really cool. And so, yeah, we're pretty much using this wax as a glaze. You know, I mean, that's kind of how it's going on right now. Uh, and leaving, you know, the white, it, it's just, there's no rules. You know, we're going to call it what it is. Wax on paint on top of distressing and aging. And I totally enjoy it. And my brother-in-law is actually going to get these matching lovely. So if he's watching, I'm sure he's pretty excited. They were just, uh, you know, calling his name. And he's really into kind of the distress look. He's a metal worker, makes a lot of furniture himself. Uh, he actually comes and hangs out and we make furniture together sometimes, which is really cool. So, yeah. And you can leave more black on than I'm doing. Uh, but, you know, just kind of... And back and forth, over and over and over. So, you know, I'll probably play with this, like, for another couple hours just because, you know, what's the rush? And the black is really cool because it, it leaves a really dark gray if you kind of wipe it in. I don't know if you guys can see that. And it just looks really, really awesome. Uh, and in person, it's, like, phenomenal. Now, you can... Whoa, hey, now. You can get a uh, brush. I'm going to leave it like that so you guys can maybe see a little better. You can get a brush. There's grooves here, and you can, you know, work in some black paint if you wanted to really outline those. Uh, but I'm not going to worry so much on that. If anything, what I would recommend maybe if you have grooves in your piece is just ride along the groove like that and give it a little more detail in those grooves. But not, you know, I put the white paint all the way in the grooves just because I wanted that. And I thought that would look a little cooler. So, yeah. And then you could basically leave it like this. Uh, but being that the Dixie Ball uh, paint or their wax is completely hey, uh, Jason. Holy, holy, oh, sorry, she's back. She's back. Susan, come on, relax. It's my, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but being that their wax is water-based as well, you can and absolutely put a clear coat on top of it. You definitely can. I did this, but I mean this. I mean, yes, you can put a clear coat on top of the wax. Uh, it's not like the other companies uh, where it's actually petroleum-based. Uh, this is all water-based products. I could probably eat it. 
but we're not going to do that tonight. Uh, so yeah, so the wax, you don't have to stop there. You can put gator hide, you can put the clear coat, you can put matte, shiny, the gloss, you can put the, you know, anything. Mermaid tail and gray. Ooh, I've, oh yeah, gravel. I have, man, these are awesome. Yeah, I'm going to have to look back through all these and pick that. Uh, but yeah, so now we are going to pick a winner for this. Look at this thing. This, I mean, guys, the I mean, the light is, is just unreal. But look, isn't this cool? It's like the coolest paintbrush. I could just like totally paint me. Uh, it's really, really cool. Uh, so we're going to definitely pick a winner right now for uh, somebody. You know, I'm just going to scroll through, not even look, just whatever. And winner is, mouse is in the way, Harriet Miller Dillon. Hopefully I said your name. Hopefully you're in here still. Be sure to comment and let us know that you're in here because where did your name go? I scrolled. Harriet Miller Dillon. We're going to spin to win right here live. And, you know, like I said before, you can get the Gator Hide. You can get 32 ounces of paint, 16 ounces, 8 ounces, 32 again, a Boss Glaze, and the Jackpot, which I hope you get, which is everything we used in the video. And that is totally cool. So I'm guessing we're just going to hold this thing like a paintbrush and we're going to spin this thing. And we're going to spin it. And we're going to look at the bearing on that thing. It just, this does not stop right here. Uh, obviously not rigged because. That went around way more than Wheel of Fortune did. So whatever it stops on, you guys can see. It's go whoa, this is we just extended the live stream. Uh right, right. It's going oh that jackpot's coming. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's oh my goodness. Oh my oh <gasps> is it oh my oh what okay, maybe it is. This thing is just never ending. Alright, so 16 ounces. We're gonna yeah, right there. 16 ounces of glaze of your choice, whatever color. Harriet was your name. Uh, be sure Dixie Bell will get in touch with you uh, for sure. Uh, you get 16 ounces of glaze, whatever your choice, whatever colors. We have a bunch of glazes here. Uh, man, the uh, all the like, if I would have a high recommendation, I would say the sapphire pearl glaze. Look at that. I mean, I just want to like eat it and drink it. But the sapphire pearl, I would say, hey, that'd be a cool glaze. But totally up to you. Uh, let us know in the comment section which one you would like. Uh, and yeah, we thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, definitely appreciate it. And hello, Sally. And hello, Susan. And go jackpot. Heck yeah, I know. I wish. No jackpot. But maybe next time. We'll be here next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be glazing some legs. Not glazing. Glazing. No, she won glaze. We're going to be crackling these legs. So these legs right here will not look like these legs right here any longer as of next week because we're going to use our crackle finish which I'm super excited to show you guys. There's so many techniques involved in that. Super easy, once again. So I hope you guys have really enjoyed the distressing. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please just hit me up on Facebook, Doing It With Jason, the link's in the description. Message me right on the video, but message me is easier. Just message me if you guys need any help, uh, you know, figuring out what product to use, how to use it, give you some help, no problem. Uh, really enjoy it. So thank you guys very much for watching and we will see you next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time.